first ever night game here at Valley as they get set to take on Shade. We got the Blue Jay here. It's a party. Let's go. This is the place Dana calls home, the Penguins Repair Shop, but it's not just repairs going on here, it's creation. Paternoville has migrated from Beaver Stadium to outside Joe Paterno's home. And Johnstown sports scene has taken on the identity of this town. Resilient, tough, and not going away anytime soon. Marauds day ended prematurely. Just six carries for 19 yards. Spoke with him outside the Steelers locker room after the game on his way to the hospital. Said he was going to have an MRI. Didn't want to talk on camera, but his parents were gracious enough to speak with us and said they were very proud of their son. This is where it started for him. It hit. I'm not quite sure this is a good idea, but I'm going to get in the batter's box, take a couple cracks, see what I got. Oh. You're probably sitting at home wondering what jujitsu is anyway. Well, it's a mix of mixed martial arts and wrestling, and Bowen and Mason here do it better than anyone else their age in the world. This is a day a lot of people in our region, myself included, thought might never come. A playoff baseball game here at PNC Park. And what makes this so exhilarating is that by 11.15 tonight, it might all be over. A one-game wildcard playoff between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds. This may look and sound like a normal high school basketball game. But there are three reasons why this game is unlike any other in state history. Yes, we're your officials for today, and welcome to today's history-making event. To even get three females on a female us. game, let alone for a boys game, is, is, it's, it's an honor. In what's believed to be the first time ever in Pennsylvania, three women officiated a boys varsity basketball game. Sue Kavensky, Terry Petek, and Vicki Markowitz, all District 6 officials, have nearly 50 years of combined referee experience. No, that way! My line, as long as I've been in education and officiating, the best man for the job is a woman, and you're looking at three of them. Need I say any more? Thursday's game was the brainchild of Purchase Line Athletic Director Jim Clapp. He told me he had been trying four to five years to have three women officiate one of his boys games. I've always believed in equal opportunity. I mean, I, I just feel inside, you know, that uh, it's sort of a sense of accomplishment more than anything. Not so much for myself, but for them getting the opportunity. Once the ball was tipped, it was all business for everyone involved. Right. And just like any other game, there were mixed reviews for the ones in the black and white striped shirts. I didn't have a problem with any one of their calls. I thought they officiated a very nice game. It was a little different. Uh, most of the male officials let you play a little bit. These ones, they, they call it a little more tacky fouls. It didn't bother us any. We just, just wanted to play. The girl that was watching this and says, we went into officiating because we saw you on TV and you said that we could do it. That's, that's great. Four years ago, the Penguins were able to lift the Stanley Cup. Look, look, look this way. And now they're looking to bring it back to Johnstown. Little machine. Meet Dana Heinze. Along with Chris Stewart, they are the unsung heroes of any Penguins playoff run, and both were born and raised in Johnstown. We're the guys that are in the trenches working in the locker room every day. Now they call Consol Energy Center their home. Heinze and Stewart have been with the Pens for seven years. Dana is the head equipment manager. Chris is the team's head trainer. They sat down with us during the playoffs to talk small beginnings and big winnings. I think back that all the time in the bus and all the long hours that we spent together and uh, you know, working with the Chiefs, it was where we started, it's our roots. For two guys from Johnstown to, to, to be sitting here Seven years together in Pittsburgh is, is awesome. While Chris spent much of the morning tending to the Penguins' seemingly endless injury list, Dana gave Six Sports an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at playoff preparation inside the Penns' dressing room. 
Are they as superstitious with their equipment as they might be uh, in the dressing room? <laughs> They're all superstitious. They all have their little quirks, and that's another thing you got to learn. This is the place Dana calls home, the Penguins Repair Shop, but it's not just repairs going on here, it's creation. Take these gloves, for example. They're UC Jokinen's. Penn's got them at the trade deadline from Carolina. He took this glove that UC had when he was with the Hurricanes and then took one of Chris Letang's gloves with the gold trim and completely recreated it. UC wears them out on the ice every night. They make everyone feel comfortable, especially new guys coming in. Uh, they get you anything they need. They they spoil us really. You know, they spend a lot of time at the rink and a lot of hard work, and you know, they they take care of a lot of the guys, and um, so it, it's good to see that uh, you know they're getting some airtime. Both Heinze and Seward say that because of their Johnstown roots, they are each other's support staff, and that support has the Penguins closer each day to another Stanley Cup. Matt Mazel, Six Sports. Now your six sports report. Good evening. He's the last connection to the Joe Paterno era on the Penn State football team. But after 18 years, Larry Johnson is done at Penn State. The news coming from the Harrisburg Patriot News, which spoke with the Nittany Lions longtime defensive line coach tonight. According to the Patriot, James Franklin offered Johnson the same position on his staff, which he then declined. Johnson telling the Patriot News he plans to coach elsewhere next season. On to the high school hardwood. Eight teams represented tonight out of four counties. We're all over the place, and we start with unbeaten Penn's Valley. Valley. At 7-0, they were down two at Tyrone tonight with 10 seconds to play. That's when Penn's Valley's Logan Johnson up fakes from the corner, backs down and gets it to go with three seconds left. We go to overtime where Brandon Grip takes over. The Golden Eagle senior putting his team on his back and one with the jumper and then grip again the drive putting Tyrone up 49 45. They don't look back 30 points for grip including 13 in overtime as Tyrone wins 57 to 49. We started out great and uh, you know we just started giving up the lead and you know we fought back the whole second half and you know we took it. All right, Bishop Guilfoyle, they've won six in a row, hosting seven and three Central tonight. Dragon scored the first two points, and then the Marauders went off. Damon Rickens for three, followed up by C.J. Fillar to Jamie Broombaugh bucket and the foul. Sam McCloskey looking over for Fillar on the wing for three, and moments later, returning the favor. Fillar to McCloskey. BG outscored Central 24 to four in the first quarter, making a statement and doing it with defense as much as offense. 59 to 19 domination over the Dragons. On the girls' side, Westmont and McCourt fight for the top spot in their Laurel Highlands section. Haley Thomas like drowning pool. Let the bodies hit the floor. No call. Mackenzie Barbin happy to play on. Lady Crushers up 28 to 19, but Westmont storms back into the third. Bridget Sheehan steps in front and she gets fouled, making the layup, ties it up at 30. Westmont then steals momentum in the fourth quarter. Nina Foster in the corner. Huge three puts the Lady Hilltoppers up 38-34. And for good measure, Bridget Moyer banks open on Monday night. Westmont wins 46-44. Huntington girls on the road looking for the upset at Holidaysburg. First quarter, Alex Shields says, I don't think so. Comes up with the block and then hustles up the floor. More good defense from the Tigers. Morgan Jennings with the steal. And Courtney Storm right there to capitalize, showing why they are the number one ranked girls team in the six sports Super Six. They win 57-34. Before the season, St. Francis women's coach Joe Haig told me he wanted his Lady Flash to score 100 points per game. Sounds crazy, but thanks to their run and gun style of play, they've averaged 108 in their two conference games. Call it 40 minutes of hell. The architect Joe Haig, aka the Paul Westhead of Loretto, highest scoring conference in the country. Their best player, Allie Williams, the BG grad with the steal. One of her seven steals, two of her 27 points, also had seven boards. Monster game. Williams, though, topped by Brian's Courtney Schistler. 36 points for her. Bulldogs led by one with under two minutes to play. And Alexa Hayward takes over. Hoop and the harm. Flash go up two. Game then tied. 4.7 seconds to play. Bryant inbounding. It's Jenica Bailey from half court. And she goes all the way at the buzzer. A stunner at the goal. St. Francis falls 88 to 86. 
Penn State hockey took the number one team in the nation to the distance last night. They got another crack at Minnesota tonight with an extra man in the house. Not only a sold out crowd on hand, but James Franklin in attendance wants to hang with the roar zone, shaking hands, taking selfies and pound on the glass. Gophers up one nothing in the second. Sam Warren comes barreling into Eamon McAdam. The Islanders prospect not happy comes back swinging both headed to the sin bin. Later in the second, pretty passing by the Gophers, and it's Warning who fires at home. 2-0 Gophers on top. Lions down 3-0 in the third, but not out. There is heat in the hot kitchen, and Kenny Brooks punches it in for Penn State. But the Gophers answer back immediately. Nate Condon with the goal as number one Minnesota wins 5-2, sweeping the series with the Lions. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Six News will be right back.